Hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Healing Element Podcast. I am your host, Kai Marie. So excited to uh, have you join me tonight. I have a very special guest, Deborah Singletary, and one uh, she has many different um, expertise, and we'll go over what exactly that is. <clears throat> but I'm really excited to have her here because she's also my yoga astrology teacher. Um, so I'm excited to have this conversation with her and um, the information she has provided to me was amazing. Um, it really helped me to learn more about in depth about astrology and our connection to the cosmos. Um, so I couldn't think of a better person to have this conversation with tonight. So tonight we're going to be talking about the winter solstice and just how as the seasons change, how that can help us on our own personal journey, how you can kind of use the different seasons to help you begin to maybe heal, maybe start new patterns um, of healing, if that's something that you are interested in. Too. So first, I want to introduce you to my guest and I'm going to read her bio. Uh, Deborah has served as an astrological uh, consultant for people going through changes that are desirable or unwelcome or for over 40 years. An artist and interfaith minister, in 1986, she founded Vision Carriers. In 1986, um, was a way of organizing her diverse interests. Dewar believes that people tap into their minds and hearts by their hands and fingers, sometimes even more than with words. Her exhibition credits include the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture's major show, Black New York Artists, of the 20th century. Her publication credits include The New Yorker and Painting from the Source, Harper and Rowe. Welcome, welcome, Deborah, to the Healing Element Podcast. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So this is just a, you know, a fun conversation, but one that um, can be helpful to people who are you know, on their journey, maybe you know, you know, one thing during this season that we're in, a lot of us are still kind of um, unable to kind of go out and enjoy the weather when it was a little bit warmer out. And now we're going into the winter months. So it can really seem like, oh, my gosh, like I didn't even get to enjoy the summer. Now it's getting cold. So hopefully with our conversation tonight, people can take this as you know, not kind of like a sad thing about it getting colder, but what can I do to be productive during these colder months um, that can be beneficial to me um, during this time? Uh, so before we jump into that, I just wanted to see if we can talk a little bit about the solstices, um, and just so people kind of get an understanding of mm -hmm. what that is, we can kind of dive into okay. um, more about healing. So at the winter solstice, the, the days and the nights are exactly equal. So as we as as the time continues, there's more daylight hours than evening hours. And then it comes to a meeting point. Almost like when you're driving a car and you're getting ready to make a turn, you kind of slow down, you, you have to you know, get some equanimity in that flow, you don't go speed ahead, you, you slow down before you speed up again. So we're kind of at that slowing down point, which many people experience as loss, Certainly, there's the loss of the heat, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, and, and there's the, the loss of the leaves on the tree, and it would appear that things are, are dying. Mm -hmm. And so often, with, and there's the loss of the actual light. Mm -hmm. And so often, we, when we have a season like that, we feel depressed or sad. And we might even think that something is wrong with us when those feelings are a natural process that is initiated by the sun going into Capricorn. Mm. 
which is ruled by Saturn. Mm -hmm. And the symbolism of Capricorn has to do with reality. And when and, and in Capricorn and, and with Saturn transits, we start a kind of review. And it's easier, you, you know, I don't do any review in the summer because I'm you're going right there. Right. You know, I'm, I'm running around and, and but when when December comes, when mm -hmm. the winter comes, I, I you know, you're sort of slowing down and you look around. Mm -hmm. And 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 metaphorically, we're actually looking around at our lives. And we're, often we're seeing what we don't like. And so that slowing down allows us to feel what we didn't didn't take time to feel when we were so busy. Mm -hmm. So it's less distraction. We're not distracted by all the stuff going on. It's yes, helping us to kind yes. of settle in. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and then that's a natural process too. That you know, that activity. So we're not calling it names, but you know, we like that too. But mm -hmm. every everything has its season. You know, the the it's like a, a cycle, and then there are cycles within the cycle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that even happens um, periodically in our work. You know, we've attained to a certain comfort maybe at work a certain stature you know what it's like when you mm -hmm. start a job i think i remember <laughs> and you know you're so excited and you're meeting people and there's all this possibility mm -hmm. and you're learning where the woman's room is and discovering that there's a kitchen with goodies in it so you could take breaks all during the day mm -hmm. and then you learn the job Mm -hmm. And then you say, mm, is that all there is? Right. Yeah. You know, what else? And so that I call it's a review period. And often when we're reviewing, we don't like what we review. You know, we may go through it with our relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, you meet somebody mm, liking, liking them or uh -huh. along with them or Park, you're not having a good time, maybe strolling through the park, whatever it is one does. And then after a while, you, you start to review. <laughs> start to review. You start to say, mm. you know, you, uh, uh, the same restaurant, the same cheap restaurant, really, you know, is do I want this? Is this good? But it does. And often people are afraid of looking within. Right. You know, we're afraid of what we might see. Mm -hmm. And so very often people avoid it. Mm -hmm. or, and maybe they can avoid it season after season. But there's always that time when you cannot avoid looking within and seeing what it is you don't like or seeing the ways in which you feel stilted and stuck by all this safety. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I was younger, um, my what what every parent hoped for their child was, uh, what do you call those jobs? A government job or, mm -hmm. um, you know, a job with benefits. With the pension. One of the, pension, <laughs> one of the yeah. jobs that you could never get fired from. Mm -hmm. Um, a steady job, you know, you know, a steady job was was everything, and and then, but after a while, that comfort, mm -hmm. you know, that predictability, that security, right, that so called security mm -hmm. can kind of get old, and old is a Capricorn Saturn word. Mm -hmm. You know what, when you said, going back to like the relationships, for example, of you're in a relationship and in the beginning, everything is great. And then, I'll, you know, then you start to think about like, hmm, I don't know if I like this or I don't know if I like that. Or, you know, you start to maybe question things. 
And also during that time of slow down, when you're reflecting, it also is probably bringing up things kind of like in a relationship, maybe you ignored. So let's say there were like kind of red, glaring red signs in this relationship that was like, <laughs> run in the opposite direction. But you're just like, oh, we're going out, we're going here. So you're ignoring all of that. And it kind of makes me think of like, as we're going to this slow down season, um, whether you're in a relationship or not, maybe there are things that we know that we had to make changes to, but because we've been distracted by, you know, whatever, whatever you've been distracted by, you, you've kind of have ignored it. And so now in this slowdown period, it's kind of like looking at our face again. And it's like, yes. oh, I have a decision now that yes. I don't want to make. Yes. And then sometimes, you know, in our lives, difficulties emerge. Or mm -hmm. often um, people come to me, uh, they'll, they'll get in a new relationship, for example, and mm -hmm. they'll say, I'm in a relationship and, and he's a cancer and, ooh, and, mm -hmm. and what do you think? And oh, and I love so much. And I say, well, have you had your first argument yet? Um, has she been late? Yeah, like what? You know, mm -hmm. wait a minute before you actually decide, because every thing will get tested. Right. Tested is a Capricorn Saturn word, and mm -hmm. when I think of taking two strings, you, you know, let's say I want to wrap a box and I need a longer string. I have two shorter ones. I put tie them together, and what do I do? You know, you this don't just tie right. it together and then wrap the the box. You you go, mm -hmm. and you know, and if it comes apart, that's the good news because right. you then it means that that bond wasn't enduring or wasn't mm -hmm. tight enough. It, and either you retired or you say, you know, this isn't going to do. And if mm -hmm. it holds, that's the good news too. But whether it holds or doesn't, you're always going to feel that tension that tug, that pull, that is what I think of as being being tested. Yeah, I like how you said that because then during this reflection period, when you that testing occurs, you can then go back and say, okay, this is where I need to make adjustments. So it's not as though during slowdown, it's just kind of like, well, everything's kind of gone to hell, <laughs> right? It's like, okay, what adjustments can I make? to strengthen it. So the challenge that I'm facing, what adjustments do I need to make to overcome or heal or position myself um, to change maybe the outcome? Does that kind of make sense to uh, along those lines? Mm -hmm. You know, as I live and learn, <laughs> I, I kind of have a different idea about um, the outcome um, I, I, I'm, I'm learning that it is not so much the out, the outcome mm. as it is the process. Mm. And and what I learned to do is is see if I can care less about the outcome. Because if I make the outcome, I want to get a promotion or I want to stay in this relationship forever and mm -hmm. I won't be happy unless I have this and that's an outcome. Mm -hmm. You know, we might miss a, the real encounter with with ourselves. Like sometimes we we don't we don't want to we think we know what the outcome should be, but sometimes the outcome is is not as good as it would be if we did, wasn't so invested in what it looks like. You know, in addition to making my life as an astrologer, I'm also an artist. And, you know, my first idea about making art had to do with how it looked. Mm. And, you know, so, it, you know, my expectation would be that it looked whatever. And, and in trying to control what it looked like, I sometimes missed what it was evolving to be. And that often my ideas about what it should look like mm -hmm. are limited, are more limited than um, what it can actually become if I listen to the wisdom 
in the painting process, if I allow it. And, and in our lives, you know, I, I, I'm learning to just to stay, to stay present. You know, mm -hmm. oh, in, I don't know what people do these days, but in the olden days, uh, <laughs> getting married was everything. Mm -hmm. Like having a relationship, a job, relationship, a job. Let me see, was there anything else? Uh, was, was, you know, you know, you have to get married. And so many people live to get married and in living to get married, they missed that reflection that you were talking about early. They, they were just focused on getting married. Right. <laughs> And then mm -hmm. they got married and, 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 and they went from saying, oh, God, oh, God, please, please, please find me a husband <laughs> to, oh, Lord, please, could you get rid of this man for me? Like, really? <laughs> Can you make him like kind of like disappear? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Because so it's right. often what we are wanting is our, is is what has been given to us at, by the collective, by mm -hmm. by the um, society that says this is what's going to make you happy. And and if you know if you're married, I'm, I'm not saying marriage is bad. Um, I'm, I'm simply saying that that as a goal is nothing. Mm -hmm. It almost eclipses. The relationship itself. Mm -hmm. What is the relationship? Right. Now, which could culminate and 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 flow into a marriage. But but when we have that goal of getting married or that goal of getting a what we call a good job, there are many miserable people in good jobs. That's true. And if you have one, you know, you work for. Let me see if I can remember what a good job is. Uh, <laughs> When you let you find that out, let me. Know. You know, well, you know, like you know, you work for like I've heard. Oh, you know, when I think of Oprah um, Winfrey, in, in case mm -hmm. you don't know who, who I mean, in case you think I mean another Oprah, Oprah Winfrey at one point had a job as an a news anchor. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine her telling her friends, ah, "I'm not happy on that job." I, I like really Oprah, like really how much money you make? What mm -hmm. you going what? You gonna give up that job? You know what I mean? We're right. going so much into that status and the security that people said, Girl, I wouldn't give up my good job if I was you. And she mm -hmm. gave it up at some point for for what I thought was okay, now you have made it. You're on ABC TV with your own talk show. Mm -hmm. And then she had the nerve enough to not like to say no, 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 not enough. Like really, Oprah? Mm -hmm. Like really, you're supposed to stay. Everything is supposed to stay put, and that's the way we think of things as staying put. But you, you know, keeping the status quo, right? And do you and, think that that staying put is that part of us paying so much attention to the outcome? And that it could journey, be. It, it kind it of be. like because I want this thing to be a certain way. I want it to so, be a certain way. Yeah. Now don't go. Don't y'all go and quit your jobs and don't call me. Talk about you need your rent money. Okay. <laughs> the your car told payment. Me. <laughs> your car payment is due because I'm I'm not going to know you. I'm not suggesting that people you know quit, but that they pay attention to their feelings. Mm. And and our feelings will very often tell us what we want, but it may start with the negative. It may start with, I don't want, I don't like. And that can be really, really frightening. However, very often, if let's say you are in a relationship, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that if you you discover that there are things that you don't like about the relationship that it automatically is going to end. It doesn't mean that it means it could mm -hmm. get better. It could mm -hmm. wake up. It could become more expansive. It could become more ideal, but it is our fear mm -hmm. of losing 
that causes us to clutch at even that which we don't like. And mm -hmm. we are in some times. Yes. And we are in a time of change. Many astrologers are are noting the lineup of the planets mm -hmm. and those Capricorn planets along and Saturn is moving into Aquarius, which is a planet of change. And this is one of the few times we get to really see the change happening. We weren't there back in the Civil War. Like we didn't get to see what it looked like, what that change looked like, because we weren't there. Mm -hmm. So we are living in the midst mm -hmm. of change. And I dare say, we are fortunate enough to be living in the time of change. Mm -hmm. We're the old vanguard. We're the old structures are showing signs of wear and tear and being done. Mm -hmm. And That's so, cool. you know, one of the things that... Um, this change introduced to us by something uh, that seems to be negative to us. Mm -hmm. And now I'm talking about Mr. Mr. or Ms. or they COVID or the COVID. <laughs> um, it's, it, it, it's been helping. It's actually an instrument of change. Not that I would have chosen that. Not that I would have said, hmm, I know how we'll make change. Let's get COVID. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I'm not suggesting that it that it in and of itself is good, but it certainly will be used for good because it's also synchronistic with the way things are are changing, the ways in which we have to adapt the ways in which um, we can't control the outcome, mm -hmm. but we can do things differently to see our way into a new world order. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The new world order comes on the heels of the death. Mm. Oh. And when you said that, there's a couple things that popped into my mind when you said change and bringing in this new system or order and, um, you know, how COVID was a, a part of that from what we can see. It makes me think of like on LinkedIn, I've seen a lot of people, this is like early on. So this ha would have to be like during the spring when we've, mm -hmm. things were starting to shut down. And I saw so many people posting on LinkedIn who are now working from home. And so many of them were saying, you know, I can spend more time with my children. Like they ended up like kind of connecting a little bit more with family. Now I will say some people probably connecting more with family than they want, they care to. <laughs> so I'm not trying to make it sound like roses and, you know, uh, yes, roses and yes, yes. but there were some people that were saying like, I can actually spend more time with my children, spend more time with my spouse, my partner, and not feel like I'm rushing from work, rushing to pick the kids up, rush. Like they had a moment to just see what it was kind of like to maybe have a, at least one meal at home where people were running all around. Everyone's in the house. Like there's nowhere else to go. <laughs> so everyone's, in, so I thought yeah. that was too. some people are like, you know what? I realize I don't really like my job and I want to start something new in the midst of a pandemic. Who would think, you know, to start something new, but there was like this new, there was this change that was also occurring in the midst of what was seemed as something that that seemed it did like shut down, um, you know, the U.S. as far as our, our businesses and schools and all the public mm -hmm. businesses that we have. But from that, there was something else that was kind of happening within some of the homes of people and the minds of folks saying, you know what, maybe I don't want to do this job forever. Maybe oh. I, you know. Yeah. You know, when it becomes time to go back to work. Yeah. And, and, and the, the bosses say, all right, everybody come back. There's going to be a lot of people who say, uh, no, thank you. 
I don't mm-hmm. think so. Right. Or I would prefer to work differently. I, mm-hmm. I think, you know, in the midst of change, um, number one, when we talk about healing, mm-hmm. a, a, a healing force is acceptance. That this is what it is mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I'm really mad at God. Mm-hmm. Like, really, God? Like, mm-hmm. you couldn't do any better than this? This is you really know, You know, but but to say, I, I, I accept. Mm-hmm. You know, I accept. This is what, I, to be able to look at the problem and face it and say, I accept that this is happening Mm -hmm. because what happens is energetically we are often resisting and 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 what i mean by energetically is you you know we're kind of holding ourselves tight Mm -hmm. and we're resistant and and you know we're, we're 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 angry and and we're sort of like thinking that this is the worst thing and we're calling it names Mm -hmm. and we're blaming it and now we're really focusing on the problem in a way that it begins to loom even larger because that's all we can see Mm -hmm. but once we say okay I accept Mm -hmm. then our vision begins to shift and we begin to see perhaps opportunities even in in that problem. Mm-hmm. I used to 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 have people in my home all the time. I was always having one kind of workshop or another, particularly astrology workshops. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh my God, you know, I can't teach astrology anymore. And okay, so let me. I'm about to to like lie, like be. Like be a fraud. So let me just say the truth. So here's the truth. <laughs> the truth is, way before COVID, I was saying I don't know if I'm a teacher astrology anymore because I live in a small apartment, and in order to have a class, I have to move the chair and drag out the table and put something on the wall, mm-hmm. and you know, and clean up. And I was thinking, like, mm, you know, maybe I'm not going to teach astrology anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, with COVID, I never it never occurred to me that I could teach astrology online. I mean, I think people were teaching online, but it seemed something that you had to be like super advanced and have a huge computer in order to be able to do it. It didn't seem mm-hmm. accessible to me. Mm-hmm. And now that 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 I see I can teach through technology, through mm-hmm. using the computer, you know. Even if I had a large apartment, I might still say, oh, no, never mind. I, I'll continue to teach on Zoom. And, and then I can teach people in California and Brazil. You know, I have, I've had international clients. Mm-hmm. You, 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 know, you know, like when did I ever have international clients when I had that idea that for the most part, people had to be come to my living room even for a reading. I mean, I often did things over the phone, mm-hmm. but that wasn't as it wasn't satisfying. And so this change, mm-hmm. I can see some some good in it now. If I could just get myself to exercise and walk more, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's one of the things that's been hindered for me and I can't say it has hindered me I I allow it to so I you know I'm not wanting to present that oh this is all wonderful you know there are things about it that are difficult and painful and people have uh, lost loved ones yes. and um, you know th- there's been a lot of uh, a lot of anger and despair and fear mm-hmm Mm -hmm. It's so true. And, you know, and everyone's trying to figure out how best to deal with all the changes as, let's say, as an adult. And then if you have little ones, now you're trying to figure out, first of all, as an adult, you're trying to figure out what's going on. And now it's like, how do I explain this thing that I never have gone through before to my child? 
you know, that's, a, you know, how do I explain to them why they can't go and play with their children that they're, we don't know when they're going to go back to school or what it's going to look like when they go back to school. They have to wear a mask all day. And so, so these are all these other changes, which, you know, I'm not a parent. So I, you know, hopefully this makes sense, but maybe more communication is now happening at home. Like maybe there's mm -hmm. more explaining things than before it was kind of like, just go do this, do that. Like maybe now this presents the opportunity for families to maybe talk a little bit more about what's going on with them in their world and also how the out external world is affecting them. I, you know, as, as, I think as parents, it gives us an opportunity. If we are, for example, seized with fear, mm -hmm. we know that if we pass that on to our children, that we are giving them a heritage of fear. Mm -hmm. And so once we realize that we're angry or confused, we have some decisions to make about how we are going to go through it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm remembering a time when I had, um, I had a beautiful an apartment I loved in Brooklyn that I had been in for 30 years and it came time to move something out of my um, powers, it seemed. Although I think everything is always within our power. Maybe we can say more about that later. But, mm -hmm. but, I, but at the time, this was like, oh, my God, horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, New York City, and I was paying way beneath market rent as it was. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I was able going to be able to find another apartment for six hundred and and fifty dollars. I mean, that's how little rent I was paying in Brooklyn. So um, I, I told the person I was working for that I was going to have to quit and get a real job because I was working in a theater. I was having fun. Mm -hmm. But one thing I vowed, and I wish I could remember the exact phrase I used for myself, but it had to do with going through it with grace, mm. that I began to look forward to telling my children how I went through it. Mm -hmm. And when I say my children, I don't mean children I've given birth to from my womb, but mm -hmm. my nieces and nephews. But like I knew that I was in the, you know, that if this was a novel, that this was a turning point and that I would have to one day say, this is what I did. And mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't want to say to them, well, I got the news. I have to move. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> then I foamed at the mouth, you know, like, because I'm going to want to shore them up. So I knew that I had to be a model of poise mm -hmm. and grace. Mm -hmm. And saying that helped just knowing that there was a way to have poise in the face of what was for me a huge problem. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed. I got an apartment that I could afford so fast. I was, I was going to, Mike was preparing to say, and then I trudged through the snow. You had the story the ready. And then I banged on the doors and I begged and I worked all night. And then I got a job, please. It, it was like, oh, look, look. Mm -hmm. and I think in part, because I had equanimity in, in my mind that I knew I didn't know the outcome. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to do it with grace and, and poise. I love that. I love you're actually speaking to me right now. So yes, bring it. <laughs> you are definitely speaking to me right now with that. Mm. Uh, with doing transition how are you pre how are you preparing your mind and how are you aligning yourself with whatever transition that you're going through so one thing that i do want to go into and i'm looking at time because time is going by fast we're almost at 8 45 already no. yes so i want to get into for people that are um that are either listening now or will be listening after um 
our live session is over. And they're like, okay, now I'm supposed to be reflecting on something in my life. Or maybe I can use this as a time of reflection. Are there any type of um, maybe rituals or um, practices that they can do during this time mm -hmm. to kind of give them a guide on how they can use this period? Um, I'm looking for my list. I think I made a list. I have some. So in any time, whenever there's confusion or there's despair, one of the first things that I do is I clean up, I clean out my closets. If I don't, if I'm, if I feel out of control and, and I don't, and I'm fearful and I don't know what's going to happen, I go through my closets and I pick things up off the floor where half the stuff ends up. I throw things away. I organize it because my sense is that that is a way of organizing my mind that when when things are helter skelter in the world then i find a place that i can control mm -hmm. in many cases that i haven't controlled mm -hmm. my my you know my drawers my junk drawer in the mm -hmm. kitchen where i store things and you know my cabinets i make room and sometimes i'm surprised that that, that i have actually space mm -hmm. that had been cluttered and i see that as a metaphor for what i've been doing with my mind having my mind cluttered and not even knowing really what i'm thinking because i'm so busy worrying i don't even know what i'm worrying about so i find that this cleaning out the closets organizes my mind and it and it and it makes me feel better and when I drag out that big bag mm -hmm. and take it out the house, you can feel the apartment lift. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's another way of saying I you know I I lighten my load. But the you know but there's another um, I don't know if it's a ritual. It might be more of an exercise. I find it's very powerful to select something about myself that I don't like. Mm -hmm. Whether it is my um, thinning hair, my tendency to cut people off while they're trying to talk. Mm -hmm. I hope I didn't do that to you this time. Um, whether it's my skinny legs. And I write to that part of myself wow. a letter of forgiveness. Mm. That is powerful. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And 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 thereby I am accepting. Mm -hmm. And I'm not resisting and I become conscious of that which I don't like, mm -hmm. which chances are I project onto other people mm. and I take it as my own. And, and if I can, I write it a love letter, you know, because if, if, if somebody said to me, um, you, you you know you don't like your legs. I, I'll chop. You know. Oh yeah, your legs are really skinny and ugly. Ooh, terrible. I say, how dare you? Like how? You know who do you think you? You know. But I think mm -hmm. I can do it to myself. So I try to become conscious about things that I don't like, mm -hmm. and I don't say, and I'm going to change them. So I take my hand and rub it over my belly, and I thank it. And, and I also understand that it got big because it's trying to help me, it's trying to tell me something. And I say, I'm going to listen to you. You know, what, tell me what you want. Tell me what you want to eat. Tell me what you want to, you know. And I, I, I make peace with that part of myself 
that I, I don't like. But and and I think the the um another thing I'd like to do for fun is to write to an ancestor. Oh, I love that too. And These sometimes I'll pick an ancestor I don't even know and I'll say, I'm writing to you and I don't know who even know your name. Mm -hmm. But I know that I come from you and through mm -hmm. you. And I write a letter of appreciation mm -hmm. to that ancestor. And 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 I'll ask that ancestor if they have anything they want to say to me. Mm -hmm. And then I'll write and I'll continue writing. And I'm not suggesting that an ancestor literally is talking to me. Maybe they are. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not prepared to say that. But what I find is that some of the voices in our heads are not known to us mm -hmm. and that and very often um even that those voices contain strands of wisdom mm -hmm. and i make a practice of listening to them but one of my favorite um things to do is to go through my house and bless the walls mm. now i live alone and so mm -hmm. there's nobody to say, what you doing? <laughs> Mom, child, mommy, Debbie's talking to the walls. <laughs> but, you know, I put my hand on the wall and I just say, like, thank you. You know, because there's so much that we take for, for granted and there's so much that we don't like. And, and my my place isn't large enough and it's not doesn't have enough. Stuff. And I just say I go through the entire house. And I say, thank you. And I have often found that after that, I I have been moved out of that very apartment that I had thanked the walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's as if it says, okay, I am ready to release you to a larger, a larger version and mm -hmm. vision of it. yourself. I, I exactly what you have laid out for for uh, for exercises or rituals you can do. I am adapting those because I, I loved everything that you just laid out. Mm -hmm. That appreciation for for yourself, for those that came before you, and everything that you're saying is just what you were talking about earlier about reflecting, like taking a moment to pause, go within, and show gratitude to your being, because if it wasn't for, you know, this body, we wouldn't be here. So to show gratitude to that, um, giving thanks to those who, I, I love it. I'm definitely going to do that um, as we approach the, the winter solstice for sure. You know, I, 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 we're almost out of time, aren't we? We're getting, yeah, we're getting close. I told so, you time was going to go by fast. I know, and I was like, an hour. So, you know, there, in terms of the, there being cycles of, and cycles, mm -hmm. there, there is what's going on in the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Then there's what's going on in what we call the world. Mm -hmm. And if I take one of the bad things that, that, that we generally agree is bad, I take COVID again. Mm -hmm. Um, that that COVID is happening in the outside world. However, when I'm courageous, I can acknowledge that it is a manifestation of a part of me. Mm. Now, don't go there if this is like creeps you out. But in other words, I say, oh, well, well, I was going to pick on um, um, uh, ISIS. That might be a little easier, like when the ISIS ISIS people were cutting off heads and that was mm -hmm. terrifying to me. And mm -hmm. and I began to accept that that there was a part of me that was like that. Now I have never mm -hmm. cut off anybody's head. <laughs> I don't even have a knife sharp enough to do it. My my knives barely will cut onions, okay? So <laughs> But, but I had to accept that this was in the world because mm. I was part of 
one and many who attracted it. Mm. And so, so rather than focus on how unreasonable and awful and stupid and ignorant they are, Mm -hmm. I say, hmm, where am I recalcitrant? Where where Mm -hmm. am I resentful? Mm -hmm. Where am I so angry that I would kill? And that if I can understand the ways in which I may not be as loving as the ideal, if I can heighten my own tolerance, acceptance of others, then I am withdrawing the energy from ISIS or COVID because mm-hmm. it is a manifestation of the collective, mm-hmm. even though we are not conscious of it. Right. And I so, so I say, okay, COVID, t- just, okay. Tell me what you got to say. (laughs) All right. I'm a listen. What's the wisdom? What can you tell me? Mm -hmm. You know, like I think AIDS taught me, and and sometimes I learn these things and I forget them, but I think AIDS, um, when when it first came up and... And anything that I go, I'm afraid of, I know that's the thing I need to deal with. That taught Mm -hmm. me something about my own sexuality Mm -hmm. and the parts of myself I may have disowned or rejected. Mm. And and so that AIDS was, I took that to be a message. Now, I'm not saying it is a message. Mm -hmm. And don't give me any more. I've got enough messages, God. (laughs) Thank you. But, but by meeting it, by facing that fear and right. accepting it as being an outpicturing of maybe perhaps even thoughts that I have had, mm-hmm. I find it helps me to not be, it helps me to not be afraid, mm-hmm. you know, to be safe, but not resistant. And I say, what is the wisdom? I did that with my hysterectomy. I didn't want them just to rip my womb out and mm-hmm. toss it wherever they toss dead mm-hmm. body parts. But mm-hmm. I, I did, I, and I did paintings about it because I wanted, because I knew it was that, that those fibroids were telling me something. Mm-hmm. What do you have to say? And that was, of course, something growing in me but I believe it is the same for structures without, that they are uh, living embodiments of Mm -hmm. thoughts about which we are unconscious. And the world has gotten to the place where it is because we've participated in it. And it's so much easier to point the finger at them. But to own that and then ask where I can do better Mm-hmm. Where can I have less hate? Mm-hmm. Right. Oh. No, power. And you know what? Power. Two things popped in my head when you said that, um, as far as, you know, what's happening external, what is that teaching us? And I know when COVID, um, I don't know if this video is probably going to have, <laughs> it's so, we're only talking about COVID. We're not talking about the other thing, the, the V word <laughs> as it relates to COVID. Um, but, uh, it made me think about when people were saying like how it would affect the ability to breathe. And as you know, in yoga spaces, what are we always talking about? The breath, understanding the power of the breath, feeling the breath going through your nose. And like, we take that, we take that for granted. And so now starting to, um, for us to then, the COVID has really made us start to pay attention to our breath, to the breath, our breathing, the importance of our breath, taking a moment for that pause. Um, and so that's one way that I, you know, when you're talking about like, I what, like that. what is the message, I like that. you know? Uh-huh. Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, so it was, um, 
So that that taking a moment to pause, feel your breath, the importance of your breath, feeling Mm -hmm. how you need your breath to move through this world. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in the other part that you meant when you mentioned ISIS and it's like, how am I connected? Because you're right. We are all a part of one body. So it made me think of some people were like, well, I would never, you know, hurt somebody with like a with a with a knife or something like that. But we, how many of us, we heard of that term, like that person cut me down with their words, right? You better go ahead, teach (laughs) God. Exactly. It made me me think of that and, you know, Uh the damage that that's done that, you know, that person may have survived that interaction with, you know, with someone that cut them down with their words, but inside they could be emotionally dead. They could just be, you know, so when you said that, those two things um, popped in my head. Wow. Well, I feel like you just gave me a reading. I, I'm going to be more kind with my sharp tongue. <laughs> no. I, you know, so in class, you did my, can I tell you, I know we're, we're getting close in time, and I know we're talking about the winter solstice, but I had to say this. When you did the reading in class, um, I was amazed how my personality <laughs> was on the the paper, my natal chart that you were reading. Uh, and I told you, uh, Dwayne, afterwards, I was like, I just got red. I mean, I got. <laughs> uh, uh, it's it just so amazing how connected uh, we are to the cosmos. Like, there isn't a separation. There isn't uh, this nature over there and man over here. Uh, that's connected. right. And so, and I, I really, I think through your class is when I got it. You know how I heard it so many times. I read it so many times. I heard other people say it. But in that moment where, you know, we were in class together and you were, and I was just like, she got that from reading the planets. <laughs> that, it just had such a, it had a different impact. I don't know. Maybe I was more receptive or something, uh-huh. but it was just like, we are connected. There, there is no separation. So with this summer solstice, solstice coming in, it's time for us to slow down. We just, we are part of nature. So we need to just slow down during this season as well, just as nature is doing um, to prepare for the next season um, or to prepare for this journey through the winter solstice. And to prepare, you know, for um, a, a new world. So you Sometimes I, I, I say, you know, if the world changed to a big extent, what could I, what could change for me that would make me unhappy? Like there were no more eggs, (laughs) you know, because that's my favorite food. You know, I, I, but it just helps me um, to, to begin to trim down my stuff, Mm -hmm. you you know, just, just to see what can I, what would I do? Well, you know, I would live, and, and it helps me to see how rich I am mm-hmm. and, and that how much I have to give mm. and to become less of a, a even an energetic quarter, to mm-hmm. become more aware that there, you know, what happens to people who have fires? And, and I don't need that demonstration, thank you. Sometimes you gotta talk to God. <laughs> it's like, I, is, I, I, I got it, I got it. But what do they always say? Yeah. I have my life. Mm-hmm. And I and and I will also I'm beginning to look at that we also have life when we leave our bodies. Mm-hmm. And so that we can relax mm-hmm. without it. Mm-hmm. Become curious. Become open. Mm-hmm. To know that when when you say we're all one, so is the ending and beginning one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to to say what the ending is and and what the beginning is mm-hmm. because it is so it is so seamless, mm-hmm. and we need not be afraid. 
Mm -hmm. And if we are, then we need to have compassion for ourselves Mm -hmm. and understand that any emotion that we have, which is violent, Mm -hmm. and fear is a violent emotion, Mm -hmm. don't believe it. Yeah. Ah, I feel fear, but I don't believe you. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you. That opens the way for faith. Mm -hmm. And a believing that will support and transport and Mm -hmm. carry you through anything life throws at you. Wow. I don't know what to say. (laughs) That was so beautifully spoken. Um, So beautifully said. And I think during this time is is so necessary, right? Because I think it is easy to operate out of that space of fear, especially if you're watching news or if you're on social media, you are bombarded with these are the number of people that have died so far. These are the number of people, like it is just constant. And then with the 24 hour news cycle. So it's so, you're so right. It's even if, you know, I say limit media and news intake, if you can just avoid it, uh, you know, you want to know what's going on, but just sitting and watching the news, I think is a hazard to your health. But if you can just take the action. Yeah. I, I'm, I agree with you, Kai. I, I agree with you. That which you focus on mm-hmm. has more power over you. Mm-hmm. Right. So I tune in enough to know that, okay, you can't go to restaurants. You know, I may need some basic information. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. to become absorbed emotionally with other people's emotions and people trying to sell um TV commercials, mm-hmm. you know, and they have to make it bad because that's how they can get people to watch. I, mm-hmm. I, I limit it. I limit yeah. it. And I also understand that those things affect our vibration. I used to love, oh God, I'm, okay, I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> I used to love those like murder mystery things on TV. Uh-huh. You know, the housewife who got killed, killed and who killed it and how the, I mean, I used to true crime. I used to love it. Uh-huh. And, and as I grew, as I meditated and, and um, increased my prayer and my meditation, my spiritual life, my spiritual study, uh-huh. I found that I, I didn't like it anymore. And, uh-huh. and, and often, you know, I didn't have to say quit. Like I knew it was bad for me. Okay. All along. I knew I shouldn't, but I just wanted uh-huh. to. So uh-huh. I did. But mm-hmm. there came a time when I had grown to the point where I could no longer um, tolerate it. Mm-hmm. And that's a good thing because those things have energy. They, they have, they, they are alive. Not right. the people on the top. The ideas are alive. And mm-hmm. when we indulge, I mean, we'd be better to take, Ten fifths of ramen. Don't do that, y'all. But <laughs> you know, because we're taking in poison, we're taking yes. poison into our system. Mm-hmm. That is that affects the way we think, even though we don't know that we're living with that kind of fear. It's so us. true. It's so true. And so you're. And I know we're getting down on time now and I just want to say in in addition to what you're seeing from news social media you also probably have friends family like did you just hear did you just see and so in order for you to like you said take a moment and say okay I have a choice of feeling this fear or not because some people Uh are like why aren't you afraid (laughs) you should be Uh Uh but to know that no I still have a choice to decide how I'm going to allow this to impact me mentally, emotionally, and physically, uh, and putting up those uh, healthy boundaries to uh, just say no. Um, uh-huh. so I, I love what you said with that, and I love the um, uh, the exercises or, or rituals, if you will, or practices that people can incorporate 
um, during this winter solstice season. Mm. Um, and I wanted to I wanted to make sure, did we capture all of what you had um, as far as? Uh, yeah, you, you, you know, the aesthetics are important. Mm -hmm. Flowers in the house, mm -hmm. um, receptacles with water, and you know, I'd be, I <clears throat> might be moving into more perhaps spiritual practices, which are, um, um, I couldn't really explain them, but mm -hmm. bring light into the house. Mm. You know, eat, buy, get some um, lights from the 99 cent store mm -hmm. and just put them on a hook and plug them in if you're not into making a design. You, mm -hmm. you know, bring light. And life, flowers, plants, mm -hmm. um, take a bowl of water, put cut flowers, you know, put flowers in it. Add, make your, make, have your house smelling good, incense, sage, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it is you like. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and make up your bed every single day. Mm -hmm. It is like watering your mind. Even if you, the clothes are still on the floor and you, cause you can't get to that because you got to get on the Zoom, mm -hmm. make up your bed and make up your mind. I love it. I love it, Devora. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You're so welcome. It's my pleasure, privilege, and my joy. Thank you so much. And if people are um, interested in reaching out to you, how can they connect with you? Email is excellent. Visioncarriers at AOL.com. I know the AOL dates me. <laughs> V Victory I S I O N C A R R I E R S at AOL.com. Okay, thank you so much. And I, um, your email, I'm sorry, your um, web address is in the description box so people can reach out to you oh, that good. way. I will yes. also add your email to have as well um, so that people can contact you for, um, for your artwork. Um, also for a reading or to learn astrology because you're offered, I recommend um, for people that are interested in learning astrology, I recommend for them to take your course. Um, I have learned so much and I think what I loved about it is, like I said, like I learned that deep connection to me and the, like there was and how during it's, I guess it's not so much about, oh, this planet is here and this is like, okay, this is how a planet is moving energetically in my chart. And this is how I now need to move. You know, and mm. I, I, just, I thought it was extremely helpful. So I do recommend wow. for register for the class. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Kai. Yes, I loved it. I loved it. Um, so everyone, thanks for those who are joining. We have people kind of signing off and on. Um, but thank you for listening, subscribing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please also share. If you want to learn more about me and my services, please go to kaimarie.com. And I will see you here next Tuesday at 8 p.m. for the Healing Element podcast. Thank you all. This is so welcome.